Zapier and Make.com. Have you ever thought about which one is better for your automation? In this video, we're going to compare both. So at the end of the video, you're going to know which one you should use. And if you wonder who I am, my name is Borja Payasan. I'm the founder of Optimal Path, which is an automation agency where we help small businesses to scale without increasing their cost. And coming back to Zapier or Make.com and to know which one is better for you, we're going to be comparing integrations, pricing, and usability. Then we will create the same automation with both of them. So we see a life example of how they work. Let's start with integrations. One of the main things that we have to look at is the amount of softwares that they are able to connect. Because as many softwares as we are able to connect together, as powerful is going to be our software. In this case, Zapier has around 5,000 direct integrations compared to the 1,500 on make.com. But this doesn't need to limit us because to be fair, in make.com you have direct integrations available with the most popular softwares. But to be completely fair, Zapier in this case has more options that you are going to be able to integrate directly with zero code. Now let's go into pricing. And in this case, there is no comparison. In make.com, in the free plan, you have 1,000 tasks or operations that is more than enough to start automating your business. And in the other hand, in Zapier, you only have 100 operations. That is not a lot, especially when you have two or three scenarios operating at the same time. Also, one thing that is super important to mention is that in the free plan of Zapier, you won't be able to build automations with more than two modules at a time, which is very limiting if we want to add delays or to use data from previous steps. Regarding the amount of scenarios or subs that we can build at a time, with Zapier in the free plan, we can build a maximum of five scenarios, while in Make, there is no limit of scenarios. And then once we go into the basic plan of Zapier, in this one, we have a maximum of 20 scenarios, which is not a lot once you start scaling your automation. And in the other hand, make.com has unlimited operation. Something that I mentioned previously is that in Zapier, the most popular apps like Shopify are not available in the free plan. Ah! So if you want to use apps like Shopify, Salesforce, and also webhooks, which are very important, you won't be able to do it in the free plan and you will need to choose the starter plan. Last, when comparing the price of cheapest plans, Make is around $10 for 10,000 operations. When for Zapier, for 10,000 operations, we would need to pay almost 130 US dollars. But it's also true that in Zapier probably we need less operations or tasks because it's slightly more efficient than Make. So to conclude, once you really start automating your business, Zapier can get super, super expensive. Now is the turn of usability, which for me among the price is the most relevant factor in order to decide which one to use because this is what is going to make the difference in the complexity of the automation that we can actually build but to talk about the usability we're going to divide it in complexity possibilities interface templates and troubleshooting about the complexity, Zapier is super easy to use. It's basically selecting the different variables and filling the field. Make is also easy to use, but at some point it may require some knowledge of coding. Usually for starters and people that doesn't have a lot of experience, Zapier is a bit more easy to understand. But for people that has more experience, Make is easier to understand and it's also easier to use. About the possibilities that Make and Zapier offer, Make offers a slightly more possibility. Make offers more operators that are possibilities to deal with the data. Also, Make offers more tools like aggregators, iterators, and some other functions that offer more possibilities of manipulating data and consequently building more complex scenarios. Let's talk about the interface now. Make's interface feels easier to understand. It's left to right, which feels more natural. And also the fact that you can link and link and move around the different modules gives a lot of freedom and gives a lot of possibilities. In the other hand, in Zapier, you can only change the position of the modules, which may feel a bit limited at some point. About the templates, Zapier offers more templates, but just because of the fact that they have more integrations available. These templates are quite simple, usually of two steps, which doesn't help us if we want to build complex automations. In the other hand, Make offers templates as well. They are less, but they connect the most popular softwares. And they are not as simple as in Zapier. They are complex multi-step automations that can help you to build complex workflows, even if you don't have a lot of experience. Now let's talk about troubleshooting that actually for me is my favorite part. Both are a bit complicated if you don't have a coded background. For me, many times is a game of guessing and just change things to see if it works. But it's possible that Zapier maybe offers a bit more of information than Make. And now we're going to create one automation in Make and the same automation in Zapier. It's going to be a simple automation where we're going to watch records on our table. And whenever there is a new record, we're going to upload a photo to Instagram. And then we're going to send a message on Slack. The only complexity is that we're going to need to filter the status between our table and Instagram. Now that we are here on Zapier, we're going to set up the automation. Okay. And the trigger of this is going to be an event that is going to to be a new record on a certain view of a database okay so i set up the integration with their table so i just need to select all the accounts and everything and i just need to set up the different fields so base is going to be 
optimal path. Table is going to be social media content. That is a table that I created just for this test. And view is going to be published. Okay, so I'm going to show you. So we have this database that is social media content and we have not published and published. Okay, so every time that a record is going to go into this view with the status of ready or uploaded, because here we have a filter. This sub is going to trigger. Okay, so we're going to click on continue here and we're going to test the trigger. So find new records and here we have this record. Okay, test, test and then the image. So we are going to select it. Now we are going to set up a filter that is going to filter only those photos and only those posts that have the status equal to ready. Okay, so status equal to ready. Here it is. We're going to continue and now it's going to show success because the record that we selected previously has the status ready. Okay, so continue. And now we're going to push the photo to Instagram. So event. No, actually, this is not Instagram. This is Instagram for business. So Instagram for business. And the event that we're going to do is publish photo. So continue because I set up the integration already and Instagram account to use. We're going to set up in mine photo. We're going to select the photo URL that is here file URL and the caption we're going to select we can actually look for it here it's going to be caption and then for the rest of the data is completely fine so I'm going to refresh here the profile just for you to see that uh, there is no photo okay so we are going to skip this test by now because then we're also going to include a notification in slack that we're going to send a message that is going to be a direct message. Send multi message node to username Borja Payasa. And here, photo is uploaded. Okay. So all of this is set up, and now I'm going to refresh here again. So you see that there is no photo here. And I'm going to go to Slack as well. So you see that there is no message. Okay. This is a message that it was uploaded, like uh, that it was sent uh, yesterday night. So I'm going to test the full automation. Continue, 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 continue with selected record. Continue. And now we are going to test the step. Okay. So now theoretically this should work and this should upload the photo to Instagram. So this is going to be continue. Now we're going to refresh here. And as you see, the photo is here. Okay. I'm going to delete it. But the photo was there. And now with the Slack message, we're going to test it as well. Continue test the step. And the message was sent about one second ago. So now let's go to Slack. And as you see here, there is a new message for is uploaded that it was just sent right here. And now we're going to create the same automation in make.com. Okay. So the first model that we are going to set up here is going to be air table, watch records. And the integration that I set up already is basically our air table currently. It's a name. You should keep it organized actually. Uh, and table as before, social media content trigger field, last modify field here. This is very important because in make.com in order to actually work, we need a trigger field that is a last update field that in this case, the name is last modified. This one that we have here. Okay. So level field is going to be file and view is going to be published. Okay. So here we're going to add Instagram for business that is going to create a photo post 
and the photo URL is going to be here and the caption is going to be here. So as you see, it's very simple as well. It's not complicated at all. And here now we're going to send a Slack message that is going to be create a message, enter manually, select from the list. It's going to be private channel and it's going to be into the test channel, okay? So test is going to be photo is uploaded. And here we're going to set up the filter. So condition status equals to ready. So now I'm going to show you the test. And as you see, this is completely empty. And now I'm going to refresh this again. So as you see, there is nothing here. And here in this test, we have this one with the status ready. Now we are going to select the test record that we want the workflow to work with, okay? So, just where to start, choose manually. And actually this is slightly more complicated because we don't actually see the records completely, okay? I believe it's this one, but I'm not sure. So let's click in run once and let's see if this works. So, okay. It read the information and as we can see here, caption test, BID test, file ID, the, the correct ID, and now we're going to see everything if this worked. So we refreshed and as we saw here, the image is here, I'm going to delete it. And now if we go to the test channel, photo is uploaded, everything is here. So as you saw in both cases, it's super simple, but maybe in Zapier it's slightly easier because in Make, remember that we have to select it like the last modified field and we actually need to create another field for Airtable if we wanted to use the integration in Make.com. Obviously, if you build more complex scenarios, it's going to be more complicated. And what is my opinion about Make and Zapier? Both are super useful and have some specific use cases. My personal opinion is that 80 or 90% of the cases, Make is going to have direct integration with the software that you want to use. So I prefer to use make as for me it's easier to understand and it also offers more possibilities. But there is also some use cases where I use Zapier. My advice is that if you are going to create a lot of automations and complex workflows, you should learn how to use make and then automatically you are going to learn how to use Zapier. But in the other hand, if you are playing around and you are just going to build one or two automations, Zapier can be a better option even if it is more expensive because it's just easier to use for beginners. So that's all guys and if you like the video, please like and subscribe. Subscribe.